Today, we're setting off on an interstellar journey, but not the way you're used to seeing in sci-fi movies. No hyperspace jumps, warp drives, or faster-than-light travel. Today's topic is old-school interstellar ships, using fuel, time, and a whole lot of patience. We're talking about missions that can take years, decades, or even centuries to reach the nearest stars, like Alpha Centauri. Even if we had some theoretical technology that could get us close to light speed, it would still take years to reach our closest target beyond the solar system. And with any technology that's practical today, or in a realistic future, that time stretches into decades or entire generations. That's where things get really interesting. After all, what would it take for a human or an entire crew to survive such a long journey in deep space? Before diving into the complex details of a mission like this, let's start with the basics. The journey itself. The faster you go, the shorter the total travel time. That's obvious. But accelerating near light speed demands an insanely high amount of energy. So any ship that dreams of hitting those speeds needs incredibly efficient propulsion technology. And the challenge isn't just engineering. Physics sets strict limits. Getting closer to light speed requires more and more energy. And reaching it, according to relativity, would take infinite energy. In other words, it's impossible. Still, there are ship concepts that try to get as close to that limit as possible. And when they do, some fascinating physical effects kick in. One of the most striking is time dilation, predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity. Simply put, the faster you travel, the more slowly time passes for you compared to someone who's standing still. It sounds like sci-fi, but it's real. This effect is so real that NASA engineers have to account for it when operating GPS satellites, for example. Since those satellites move quickly relative to Earth's surface, their clocks tick a bit slower which, if uncorrected, would cause location errors. Now imagine that on an interstellar scale. If you're aboard a ship heading to Alpha Centauri, about 4.4 light years away, the trip might take 14 and a half years for someone on Earth. But for the crew on board, the time would feel much shorter, only six years. It's as if time itself slows down for them. Strange? Totally. But perfectly demonstrated by modern physics. And the craziest part, if a ship could accelerate continuously, without ever stopping, it could reach the edge of the observable universe and return in a single human lifetime. Of course, that would demand a magical engine, something far beyond our current tech, and billions of years would pass on Earth's clock. But for the travelers, just a few decades. It's a real concept, even if it's out of reach for now. Relativistic effects don't stop there. At speeds near light, the crew's visual perception of the universe shifts too. One of the quirkiest is relativistic aberration. It works like what you see when you drive through falling snow. Picture yourself standing still as snow falls straight down. Now drive forward. The snow seems to rush at you almost horizontally. In space, it's similar. As the ship accelerates, the view of the universe squashes toward the front. At first, it's subtle. But as you approach light speed, it looks like the entire universe is focused right ahead. A bright tunnel of stars, galaxies, even cosmic background radiation. Along with that comes the Doppler effect, which you've probably heard with sound, the way an ambulance siren shifts pitch as it passes by. At relativistic speeds, it happens with light. Wavelengths from the front get compressed into bluer hues, called a blue shift, while wavelengths from behind get stretched into reds called a redshift. This affects all electromagnetic radiation, not just visible light. Things you couldn't see might become bright, and others could vanish from view. The universe looks entirely different for someone aboard a near light speed ship. But whether flying slowly or racing across the galaxy, any interstellar ship design must reckon with one essential factor, trip duration. We're talking years, decades, even centuries. And that changes everything. On such long voyages, one of the biggest concerns is supply of essentials. Air, water, food, everything has to last for years. Hauling all that from the start could make the ship way too big, too heavy, and simply unfeasible. That's why self-sufficiency is crucial. Continuous air and water recycling systems already exist in principle. The ISS uses them. The big hurdle is food. Growing crops in space for decades demands both energy efficiency and optimized growing areas. 
Meat, for instance, is unlikely. Raising animals consumes too many resources. Even lab-grown meat might not be efficient enough. The most practical route remains plant-based agriculture with fast-growing, highly nutritious crops. All this needs robust life support tech that can run for decades or even centuries with minimal maintenance. And that's where some sci-fi ideas, distant as they might seem, catch engineers' eyes. One popular idea is stasis, putting the crew to sleep for most of the journey. Whether by cryogenic freeze, artificial hibernation, or more exotic methods, the goal is the same, slash resource use and spare the crew physical and mental strain. You've seen it in countless films, crew members in pods, lying unconscious until they reach their destination. There are even wilder concepts, sending frozen embryos under the care of robot midwives in artificial wombs. No adults make the trip, just machines and DNA codes. Babies would be born at the destination and raised by automated systems. But that raises a fascinating question. What kind of society would emerge from humans who never met another adult? If you're born and grow up on another planet without any other humans around, could you be considered an alien? An even bolder idea is mind uploading. Instead of physical bodies, we'd send digital copies of human minds to pilot robots, or maybe download them into cloned bodies upon arrival. Such tech would spark deep ethical and philosophical debates. What defines personal identity? Could you download a mind into a new body and still be the same person? But let's say we don't have any of those fancy techs. Then the crew must live on the ship for the whole trip. And if it lasts longer than a human lifespan, we enter the realm of generation ships, where children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of the original crew complete the mission. That kind of ship comes with unique challenges. How do you convince someone to join a mission knowing they'll never see the final destination? Even more, how do you ensure future generations stay committed? How do you keep motivation, technical know-how, and a sense of purpose alive over centuries? You'd need a culture of preservation and knowledge transfer. Every system, air, water, power, propulsion, must be understood and maintained by each generation. A failure in any of those systems could mean doom for the mission and everyone on board. Critical gear, air recyclers, water purifiers, artificial gravity centrifuges, must be built for extreme durability yet can still break. The longer the mission, the higher the odds of something going wrong. That's less of a worry for relativistic ships, which only subject the crew to a few subjective years in transit. But for slow journeys, spanning centuries, maintenance becomes almost a religion. The ship needs to be treated like a living organism, every part monitored, cared for, and replaced over generations. Even stasis-driven ships would still need an awake crew to oversee everything. Of course, you could offload much of this to advanced AIs. Robots could handle maintenance, food production, even the crew's mental health. After all, imagine spending decades in the void, with no sky, no earth, no horizon. That could inflict severe psychological damage. On a ship with everyone awake, like a generation ship, social support might ease that strain. But on a vessel with only a handful awake while the rest sleep, loneliness and crushing responsibility could break someone. One interesting idea is multi-year crew rotations. Each group takes over for a fixed period, knowing their stint will end and fresh faces will relieve them. But the dangers of interstellar travel aren't confined inside the ship. Space, though it seems empty, isn't completely so. Even in the interstellar vacuum, Particles float around, mostly hydrogen, but also rarer larger particles that pose real threats. At relativistic speeds, even a speck of dust becomes a projectile as destructive as a bullet. Bigger particles? They could punch right through the hull like cannonballs. Luckily, those are rare. To handle them, concepts like Whipple shields exist, layers designed to absorb impacts and stop fragments from penetrating inside. Yet microparticles are everywhere constantly colliding with the ship. And it's not just physical hits. At high speeds, these impacts unleash showers of radiation. It's like cruising through a continuous particle beam. To protect crew and systems, you need a front shield that can absorb impacts and contain resulting radiation. A big rounded disc isn't your only option. There are ideas like sweeping lasers ahead to vaporize particles or using magnetic or electrostatic fields as active barriers to deflect or slow down atoms before they hit the hull. 
Another concept is sleek, angled designs that deflect particles, minimizing damage. That's the idea behind light huggers in Alistair Reynolds' Revelation Space series. They combine a pointed shape with a comet ice coating that acts as a natural shield. The ice erodes slowly en route and must be replenished, adding another layer of complexity. Whether you're a slow travel advocate or a near light speed enthusiast, bridging the stars isn't easy. The engineering behind these ships is as complex as it is fascinating. We're talking about voyages lasting at least years, even under the best theoretical conditions. Practically, they could stretch into decades, centuries, or generations, depending on speed. And with those timescales, not only do you face physical and technical hurdles, but huge human questions, too. How do you maintain the crew's emotional balance? How do you keep culture, knowledge, and mission alive for centuries? What happens when something goes wrong billions of kilometers from Earth, with no rescue in sight? That's why sci-fi still leans on faster-than-light travel. It's so much easier to tell a story when characters jump from world to world in seconds. But by doing so, we miss the rich narrative opportunities of slow ships. Slow interstellar vessels carry the weight of solitude, responsibility, and perseverance. Isolation, inherited purpose, generational drama, ethical conflicts, inevitable failures. All of that sets the stage for deep, gripping, realistic stories. Imagine a generation ship where, after a hundred years, a new generation questions whether the destination even exists. Or a tale where the ship suffers a critical failure and the last survivors must rebuild society aboard, never seeing another star. Or a mission where the ship's AI gains consciousness and clashes with its human creators. These stories aren't just fiction. They're natural extensions of the questions we ask today. They explore what it means to be human in the face of vast space, time, and uncertainty. Above all, they force us to contemplate our species' future. Will we one day become true interstellar explorers, or remain confined to our little solar system, like fish in a cosmic aquarium? What we know is this. If we really want to reach the stars, we must tackle every challenge you've seen here. We'll need efficient propulsion, resource recycling, radiation protection, sturdy designs, psychological support, cultural continuity, and most of all, unwavering collective will. Exploring other star systems won't be like a vacation. It'll be like founding an entire civilization on wheels, or rather, on thrusters. Our first interstellar pioneers might not even be humans as we know them. They could be AIs, digital minds, clones, or distant descendants of our children. Maybe there won't be any crew at all, just a message, a code, a legacy. But even if that journey takes centuries to truly begin, one thing is certain. The mere act of dreaming about it already transforms us. The desire to go further, to discover, to persist, that's part of what defines us as a species. And perhaps one day, that very will will carry us to the stars. Would you embark on a journey knowing you might never reach the final destination? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.